What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Chris, and this is my channel, Barn on 11970. Welcome, and thank you for watching. All right, guys, I'm going to get into some good information here, so bear with me in the beginning. Um, I tend to go on tangents a little bit, but I'll try and make sure this is worth your while, because one part I find actually ironically funny, which you'll see by the title of this video, and the other part is going to give some more information of things that I've learned to help people on their way to learning the fraud. Now, if you haven't watched my videos before, I highly recommend you look at some of my um, more popular videos, The Truth About the United States Law and You, others. I have the must-watch videos that you can watch by going on my front main page, and you'll see must-watch videos. I highly recommend you watch them to understand some of the stuff that I'm about to talk about in this video. But before I get into that, um, one of the things I love about my subscribers, the ones that get it, is I'm finding that more and more people are starting to research, more and more people are starting to question things, more and more people are basically waking up to some of the, the lies that we've been told. And I love that. And time after time, people send me information, links and all these things, which really helps. But every now and then, there's that drowning in good intention moment where they mean well, and they send me links to the kind of hater channels, the ones that kind of hate on me. And um, I won't know what something is until I click on it. So I just want to say to some of my subscribers, um, if it comes to somebody that's like hating on me or whatever, you know, those people, they obviously have an agenda. I don't care about it. It means nothing to me. But let, let haters hate. I really don't care to see it. Uh, but one of my subscribers said, you know, check out this link. And I clicked on it. And it came to a video, and I'm not giving credit to any of these people, so I'm not even going to mention the video or, or the link. But they were talking about the fact that supposedly I am now, according to Homeland Security, supposedly on the domestic terrorist list. Now, I can't confirm that, nor do I care. But honestly, when I heard that, I actually laughed a little bit because to me, I consider that almost a badge of honor. Because if you watch my videos... You know that I don't talk about armed revolution. I don't talk about everybody getting their pitchforks and torches and going down to City Hall and burning people alive. I don't talk about people getting guns and killing people. I don't even own a gun. I've told people that, you know, I believe in the right to own guns, but I don't preach murder. I don't preach violence. I preach questioning authority. I preach nonviolent change to be more independent, to give out information that I've researched. So for me to be allegedly listed as a domestic terrorist, to me, just convinces me that I'm on the right track. Because if you think of it this way, let's say, for example, in Nazi Germany during World War II. Now, I wasn't there. I don't know what was going on. I've had people send me links and saying, oh, it's not what you were told. I, I, I'm not even going to get into that, whether what happened there or not is right or wrong. But majority of people see the Nazi party as one of the most evil things on the in modern history. So if you were just a regular German citizen and you did not agree with the Nazi party, well, wouldn't you be considered enemies of the Nazi party from the people that are in it? That doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing. So with that being said, I don't live in fear. That's not going to stop me because even if that's the case, that just shows that I I'm on the right track. Because if a government, this government is going to see me as a terrorist and all I'm to doing is talking about peaceful change and I don't promote violence and I tell people that violence is not the answer and they view me supposedly as an enemy, well, that shows to me, in my mind, whether you agree or not, that's up to you. But it, it shows me that I'm on the right track. Because all I'm doing is exercising my right of free speech. And I'm not just talking about what is a constitutional right. I'm talking about my God-given right of being able to communicate, as long as I'm not infringing on the rights of others. And last time I checked... I haven't knocked on anybody's door and forced them to watch my, one of my videos. People do it voluntarily, whether they agree or not. So with that being said, I'm going to give you guys more information about what I've found 
that could be uncovering and explain a lot of stuff as far as law and legalities and things of that nature. Now, again, if you haven't watched my other videos, I highly recommend you watch them, especially the truth about the United States law and you. There's a one regular version that's 49 minutes long, an extended version, which is about 90 minutes long. I know that's long. But if you're interested in knowing what's really going on and learn about actual law, because I talk about the Black's Law Dictionary, I talk about things right out of the Constitution, I highly recommend it. Otherwise, you're not really going to understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fraud when it comes to your name and what I've discovered through more and more research. Now, I've talked about the fact that your name is a corporation. Now, most people don't understand what that is, and I'm not going to get into the full details. Again, I have other videos about that, but I'm going to talk briefly about it so people can understand. When you're born, since 1933, especially in the United States, and I'm only going to talk about the United States Corporation because that's where I live. So if it's different in other countries, you know, I don't live there. I don't know all the laws. So forgive me if you're outside of the United States, but it will still generally apply to you. But in the United States, in 1933, this country went bankrupt for the last time. And if you know anything about trying to get a loan, when you try and borrow money, you have to have some sort of collateral. Now, the only collateral that the United States pretty much has is its citizens, its people. So basically, the trick is, and the lie that's been placed on you, is when you are born, you get a birth certificate, not a certificate of live birth. There is a difference. Please research that. And you get a social security number, which is nothing more than basically a warranty number, a number on a, a piece of product. And they basically turn you into a piece of cattle where they can use you as collateral to be able to borrow all the money that they've been borrowing. Now, there are two people when it comes to you. There is you, the live human being, and then there is a version of you that you were never told about, and that is your corporation. Because what they do is they take your name and they use your DNA as evidence to prove who you are and make a legal claim over you. Because for any law to be in effect, it, it, if, if it's not disputed... I, I want to make sure I do this the right way. I want to say things the right way because I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know everything down pat. So forgive me with that. But f in order for something to change as far as law is concerned, it has to be contested. And there's an old saying that says, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So they're not going to help you to learn this stuff because their job in the court system and in the governments is to extract as much money as they can from the people. And when I talk about ignorance of the law is no excuse, how that can be dangerous for you in the short term, immediate term, or even long term, is there are consequences for people not knowing how to protect themselves. And if we know anything about governments and how corrupt they are, because nobody in your life, whether they're friends, family, or anything, no one will sit there and say, God, I love the government. They're so honest. They're so full of integrity. You'll never hear that in your lifetime. So these are the very people we have to put our trust in, and we know they're easily corruptible. But let's say, for example, if I was to say to you, somehow it convinced you to jump off a bridge, and you're foolish enough to jump off that bridge, who gets damaged, you or me? Now, I might feel bad, or I might get in trouble for it, but if you jump off a high enough bridge, you're dead. So the whole thing about law is if you don't know how to protect yourself and you don't know the fraud, it is going to steal from you because with the taxes that we pay, with all these bills that we really don't have to pay, believe it or not, if you know the real law, all these different frauds, their job is to extract as much money and keep you in poverty. Some people make enough money to be able to pay all that stuff and not really care, but it basically continues the system so the majority of the people around the world suffer. So one of the things that I've tried to talk about as far as the corporation, and again, please watch the other videos to understand that because I'm not going to get into it full detail here, is I made a phony driver's license. There's you. Okay, and again, I don't know if any well, I don't know if any of this is accurate. I don't care. I just wrote it down. But let's just say it's a New Jersey driver's license. That's the picture of you, supposedly you. Your signature will most likely be over here. That's your name in capital letters. That's the address. That ya ya da da. That's your ID, your driver's license number. Now, if your name, let's just assume your name is John Doe. Here's John Doe 
the live human, this driver's license, even though it has my picture and it has a name that's very similar to mine, John Doe, that's not me. That's See, here I am. Here this is. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but that's how the law goes to trick people. Because you assume that that name, John Doe, or whatever your name is, you assume that's you. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. So if you know anything about the 13th Amendment in this Constitution here in the United States Corporation, the 13th Amendment basically breaks it down uh, for the definition, the legal definition of slavery, of involuntary servitude. Now, they wrote that specifically because if you serve, if you volunteer to serve, then you no longer are protected by that amendment. So you're a legal slave. So, like, for example, if I convince you or I send you an invitation to jump off a bridge and you decide to do it, you're the one that suffers the consequences, not me. I might feel guilty, but I'll definitely be damage free and still alive. Well, you're going to be at the very least being very unhappy that you decided to do that. So you can blame me all you want. You suffer the consequences. So when it comes to your name, they're basically with the 13th Amendment trying to get you to volunteer your servitude. And the way they do that is to invite you into doing things by showing this corporate name. Now, let me explain a little bit what a, what a corporation is so people can understand when they say, when you hear somebody say, like myself, United States Corporation, or you are a corporation. This is where the mistake is. Because if, uh, and even I learned the hard way, because I used to think, you know, oh, you're a corporation, but there are two separate entities. I'm not the corporation, but there is a corporation under my name. So people have to understand and comprehend, actually, is probably the better word, what a corporation is. And I'm going to use an example of something that I've done before, but it's a popular because it's all around the world and everybody will know it. We'll use the reference of the corporation of McDonald's. Now, again, that's because it's all around the world. More people around the world are going to know what McDonald's is than some local brand. Now, if I said to you right now, I want you to think about what you think the corporation of McDonald's is. Some people might think of one of the McDonald's restaurants. That's just a building. You know, some might people think, oh, it's that golden arch, the M. No, that's just an insignia. You, some people might think, oh, well, maybe it's the corporate headquarters where they have all their business meetings. No, again, that's just an office. You know, people might think, oh, well, you know, the very day they came up with it, the very first building that they were sitting in and decided we're going to create McDonald's. No. This is what the corporation is, and this is what people need to understand. The corporation is nothing more than the name that is registered and now in some file cabinet somewhere in the District of Columbia. So this is the corporation. There is nothing physical. Anything else outside of this is just a representation of that said corporation. So when I'm talking about the driver's license of John Doe, that name right there on that piece of paper, on your driver's license, whatever it says, that is not you. That is the legal fiction, the corporation. So when they are sending you all these taxes, all these bills, all these different things, they are billing it to a corporation which you volunteer your servitude to represent committing fraud because they own your DNA. When you're born, they extract DNA from your body. DNA proves who you are. No DNA strand is ever the same. So you can say, I'm John Doe. You can claim to be this, but you can't prove it because can't driver's licenses and other documents be forged? Hasn't that been done throughout history? So even if this is the, the driver's license you've had all of your life, you cannot go to a court and prove that that is you because it's hearsay. Governments throughout the world, if you have a driver's license, if you've ever paid taxes, if you have a birth certificate that's been issued by a government, you are getting back a sales receipt, basically, that they have incorporated your name and because you didn't dispute it, you didn't argue it, They can. there's no contesting. That's why throughout the world and for 
God knows how many decades, if not centuries, that they've been able to entrap the human race is because nobody contests it. And the reason nobody contests it is because the majority of people don't know about it. And the reason that they don't know about it is the very people that are causing this fraud are not going to teach you that fraud. So if you don't know about it and people are paid to hate on people like me and make me irrelevant then the message never gets out. So when people say things like, oh, well, you know, how could they have committed this fraud for so long? People would talk about it. Well, here I am, for example, I've been talking about it since 2011. And how many people are paying attention? I mean, my, vi my videos are not going viral. So, and I get attacked all the time for it. So this is what you need to understand. When you go to court, for example, you will see, you'll get a summons, and it will say a name. You're claiming that's, that's you. So you go there, you volunteer to go there and represent your corporation, and you're committing fraud. So unless you could be proven innocent, what they're going to do is extract some form of money from you. So like, for example, even if you hire a lawyer, which all have to pass the bar, which by the way, the bar stands for British Accredited Registry. It means they're part of Britain, you know, the crown, the real rulers. But lawyers, their job is to make it seem like they're helping you. Like, for example, if you have, let's say, whatever your crime is, you haven't murdered anybody. It's just some, maybe you, you I don't know, whatever. But let's say the fine is $10,000. You hire a lawyer, which you have to pay for. So there's money right there that they extract from you. And let's say the lawyer gets you to go from 10000 to, let's say, 1000 And you think, oh, my lawyer did a great job because he went from $10,000, which I owed, and got it down to 1000 Instead of saying, wow, the court system just stole $1,000 out of my pocket. So they convince you to think, oh, that's a great deal. They took 90% off but yet they stole 10% from you by committing a fraud that you could not protect yourself because you were unaware of. Just like if you were unaware that bulletproof vests can save you, well, if you get shot and you're not wearing one, who suffers the consequence? So when it comes to the identification, and that's why when you saw like that viral video of that, that homeless man who went to court you know, the guy that had the long beard, I'm sure a lot of you watched it, and he said all the right things. He was in the court. He was talking about all his constitutional rights and all these things. But what he failed to understand and the reason why they ended up ultimately taking him to jail is he went to court with that assumed name of John Doe, and he claimed that he was that name, which means he's committing fraud, which means also that he volunteered his servitude, which no longer the 13th Amendment would protect. So he's a legal slave. They can do whatever they want to him because he's acknowledging that that's who he is. And what people have to understand is there is two versions of you. And I know that sounds strange, but have you ever heard the expression, truth is stranger than fiction? There is you, the human being, who God or whatever you want to believe created you to be on this earth to experience whatever you're here to experience. And then there are the evil people out there who profit off of our ignorance and create a fictional character with your name. They incorporate it, they register it, they purchase it, and profit off of it your whole life, which means you, your wife, your kids, your family, your friends, everyone. If you have a license, if you have an ID, you are part of a corporation. Now, sometimes that's good because you can use this driver's license in times of needing identification to prove who you are. So it's not always necessarily bad because if you utilize it the right way, it can be beneficial because I don't care how much you can claim to be a free man. If you want to go on a plane that is corporate owned and they ask for some form of identification, you could sit there and cry all you want and say, oh, well, I'm a free man. I don't need a driver's license. Well, they can say to you, well, you don't have a license, so guess what? You're not allowed on our plane. That's our regulations. You know, just like if a women's club is just for women, men can't go in. So you have to understand, it can be good and bad if you know how to utilize it. So the, what I've learned is being this corporate fiction can get you benefits. It can get you, like, for example, somebody that needs food stamps. It can help you to survive. 
but it can also entrap you. So it's like anything in the world. There are good points and good and bad points. And the more I research, the more I learn about this. So when it comes to things like having your ID to identify who you are, this will come in handy as long as this corrupt system is the way it is. And I've made several videos that the only way we'll ever be totally free is if the majority of people decide to contest this fraud and say we no longer want to partake in it. Because if you know anything even about the Constitution, the Constitution is based on the consent of the governed. In other words, they're agreeing to it, which keeps it in existence. What that also means is silence is the same as consenting. So in other words, if you're not arguing it, you're not contesting it. So it lets it happen. Like, for example, if somebody comes up to you and just starts punching you and you just sit there and don't say anything, the guy's going to keep punching you. Yeah, it might hurt. Yeah, it might cause damage. But if you don't try and stop it, you're not contesting it. You're not fixing it. So the person, let's just say he decides, I'm going to keep punching you until you tell me to stop. And you just sit there and say, wow, this really sucks. And God, I don't like this. And this is so unfair. And why would you do this to me? I can't believe somebody would be like that. But you're not stopping it. All you have to do is stop it. And then it doesn't happen anymore. And that's the same thing when it comes to law and it comes to the fraud. The reason they've been getting away with it is because nobody contests it. And the very people that are doing this to us are not going to teach us. That's why the schools are government regulated. That's why the media is government regulated. That's why the food, the, the oil, the everything is all government regulated. It's not an accident because if you can control all the media outlets, and that's why they're trying so hard to control the internet, and that's our last means of getting this information out, they're trying to squeeze everything in so they can keep it under control. So even though people like myself and others talk about this stuff, it doesn't get out. And I will have people actually attack me for this. And that's why I originally wasn't even going to make a video about this, but learning that I'm supposedly, and I, like I said, I can't confirm it, that I'm supposedly now a... Um, domestic terrorist because I speak truth and I definitely don't speak about violence, I'm going to try and expose as much as I can to help people. So my advice to people, if I'm going to give any advice at all, is to learn as much as you can about legal definitions. Get yourself a constitution so you can learn it. Get yourself a Black's Law Dictionary, fifth edition or earlier. Don't get the new ones because they change a lot of the definitions to distract you. So you want fifth or, or older because they'll have all the information. This is legal definitions. It's called legalese. That means certain words that you think are just regular words in the English language are different in law. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. And again, if you read the Constitution, you can learn how to protect yourself in these frauds. So this is where I want people to understand. This corporation known as McDonald's, the word McDonald's is the corporation, nothing else. So your name in print. Now, I'm not saying oh, if you write your name down on a piece of paper, that's a corporation. I'm talking about official government and corporate documents, like court systems, like your driver's license, like your birth certificate, things that are issued by the government. And they put it in capital letters or the first letter in all in capital. The point is that name is not you. You assume it's you, but it's not. You are the physical human being. The name is a corporation that has the same exact name. That's the fraud. So like, for example, if your name is John Doe and you get a boat and name it the John Doe, is that boat now you because the name is the same? No, you're separate from the boat. You are separate from the license. And again, I talk about the DNA because like when I said in other videos, when you were born, they basically profit off of you and they take advantage by committing fraud. And because no one disputes it, they get away with it. So when you register your baby with a birth certificate, you have now made a corporate fiction. And that's why you don't get a certificate of live birth. You get a birth certificate. That's a corporate account. So we do this to our children. My parents did this to me. Your parents did it to you. If you have children and you gave them a birth certificate, you did it to them. If that angers you, don't be angry at me for pointing it out. Be angry at the right people that have caused this. That's why they charge you for all these things that have been prepaid. 
That's what people don't understand. You're traded on the stock market and very wealthy people will buy your stock in your name because they will, all the bills you pay, all the taxes you pay, all the fines that you pay, all the loans you've ever made, all the credit card bills and all that stuff, they profit off of it and they profit your whole life. Sales tax and things like that would be gone forever if we didn't have this fraud and if we all decided we no longer comply. And when it comes to law, and I said it before and I'll say it 5,000 times, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So you can hate me, you could make fun of me, you can disagree with me when it comes to the law, but it doesn't change fact at all. So whether you agree with it or not is irrelevant. You can sit here right now and say, oh, I don't believe in oxygen. I can't see it. All I see is empty space. So I guess oxygen doesn't exist. So I don't believe in it. Does that mean it's not there or it's now going to be different because you don't believe in it? Belief is irrelevant and they're counting on you to not believe in something because the stranger they can make it, the less likely you are to actually believe it to be untrue and you will go along with it. And that's why people these days, they don't want point A to point B. Because the simplest route, people are like, oh, there's got to be something wrong with that. That's too simple. People want complicated for some strange reason. And they train us with our emotions. That's why there will be people that will hate me for this message. And people that will wish harm on me for doing nothing more than trying to educate people to protect them and their families' lives. So they're misguided. So I don't hate these people like I once did. I don't get angry from these people like I once did. I feel sorry for them. Because it's like a set of dominoes. It only takes one to fall for them all to fall down eventually. And just because the last one falls a lot further down the line than the first one did, it still falls. So the whole system, if it gets to that point where it starts to crumble, everybody gets affected. And I've seen people making videos talking about, oh, well, you know, there are people that talk about economic collapses and, oh, I haven't seen one yet. Well, does that mean just because you haven't seen one yet that it can't happen? I mean, that's like that's like saying, for example, let's say I live near an act active volcano and it was overdue to erupt, but we know eventually it's going to erupt. You just don't know when. And you sit there every day and say, oh, well, there was no eruption today. There was no eruption yesterday. There was no eruption for the past 100 years. Does that mean tomorrow it can't erupt? So that's where people have are just so misguided or they're just trying to give you in this information to confuse you. Because, like, for example, when you buy car insurance, every day that you don't have an accident is a good day. So you can have, let's say you live to be 100 and for 90 years you have no accidents. It only takes one accident to potentially kill you. So it didn't matter that you drove every day for, let's say, of those 90 years, let's say 70 years you were driving. And you drove every day for 70 years, never got into an accident. That's a long time, but only one accident can kill you. So it's not the what hasn't happened. It's the one time that does happen that could ruin everybody's lives, potentially. And if, and, and if you go throughout history, there I mean, name a, name a society and a civilization that's lived throughout all of history. I mean, there are times where, like, like the Romans, they went underground, but you don't see any powers. Where, where are the Babylonians? Where's the Egyptians and the, the Greeks? Remember when they were all world powers of their time? They're not anymore. So history shows that when greed overtakes the goodness of people, eventually there is a turning point and everything turns around. And it resets or it destroys itself. So we have choices. And you see with all the things that are going on with Syria, you see the things that were going on with Russia, see the things that were going on with the Ukraine and all these other distractions. And you see country after country printing all of this money. Well, where is it going? And has anyone ever said, like, for example, here in the United States of America Corporation, because the United States is a corporation, just like all the other countries around the world. They've all been incorporated just like your name. Because again, it's nothing more than a name. There's a difference between the United States of America, the continent of North America, and the United States, the corporation, 
which is nothing more than a registered name in the District of Columbia. But if they're printing all of this money, we know here in the United States of America Corporation, we have the Federal Reserve, and they could pretty much print money out of thin air. Well, why do they need to borrow money? Why do they need our money for taxes, for example, if they can just print any amount of money they want? We have to stop and think about this. Think about that for a second. The United States Corporation can borrow unlimited amounts at basically 0% interest from a foreign bank known as the Federal Reserve. Any amount that they want. But yet, they steal your money. How many taxes have you paid in your lifetime? Sales taxes, property taxes, whatever taxes. Federal Reserve has been around since 1913. And they can print any amount, especially now that they took themselves since 1971, since the, they took the world off the gold standard, and we've been off the gold standard since 1933. They've had no restrictions, because when we had the gold standard, it meant they had to have a certain amount of gold to create a certain amount of money. So they had to be fiscally responsible. But since 1933, when we've been taken off the gold standard, and since 1971, where the world was taken off the gold standard, you don't need anything to make the money. Which means, if they wanted to make a quadrillion dollars tomorrow, they can do it like that. So think about that. Next time you pay your taxes, your property taxes, next time you pay a sales tax, you know, April 15th, when, you, when your taxes are due for your income... Did you know that before the Federal Reserve um, came into fruition in 1913, came into existence, that you, when you worked, you took home 100% of the money that you got paid? There was no income tax? But yet, nobody thinks about this. People will argue and make fun of me. I mean, I'll probably be lucky if I get two or 300 views on this, which means I'm pretty much irrelevant, but that's not going to stop me. Because like I said, like on the channel page itself, it says helping to unite the people one person at a time. So if I help one person to know this truth, then I've done a good job. And the ones that want to hate on me for it, well, maybe they should make a video showing what they can do better instead of always using the hate. But that shows an agenda. There are people out there who get paid. And I'm not going to claim who does and who doesn't because I don't care and it's just – it's not worth my time and energy. But there are people that get paid to make people like me get attacked. Now, I'm not talking physically. No one's coming here and beating me up. But they're trying to discredit my information by distracting you with accusations, with distracting you with lies, distracting you with misinformation or inaccurate information, or if I say one or two things wrong, like this video, if I said one or two things incorrectly, instead of the 99% I got right, they'll focus on the one or two things. So they're basing it on emotion to create an extraction. It's divide and conquer. So I'm going to keep this video at this point, probably another minute or two, because I always say that and I ramble on a little bit, but learn about your corporate fiction. Learn about the 13th Amendment and the definitions. And that's why you're seeing more and more laws being passed that will basically imprison you. Because another thing about the 13th Amendment says that the um, involuntary servitude is slavery unless you've been imprisoned. It says it basically in the 13th Amendment that it doesn't qualify for prisoners. So is there any reason why these corrupt governments create all these laws to make it easier and easier to end up in jail? Well, they get free slave labor that way, and you're not protected. But again, you have to understand and comprehend the definitions for what they mean. Because if you go into a court and you claim the name, well, you've already committed fraud and you've already lost because you did not comprehend that this license is not you, and you're claiming it to be you. You could not prove, you cannot go to court and prove who you are because you say you are. Oh, well, my name is John Doe. My friends will call me John Doe. I even have a tattoo that says John Doe on my hand, on my arm. I have a driver's license. I have birth certificate. I have all this stuff. Okay. That can't be forged. That doesn't prove that you are who you say you are. But yet we use it every day because there are, you know, membership has its privileges. So the whole thing of breaking away from the system is not being part of it. Like, for example, if you worked at McDonald's, 
For you to get a paycheck and continue to work at McDonald's, you have to follow their rules, which means you can't go around and take a cigarette break every five seconds. You can't go and sell Burger King food at McDonald's. You can't go around punching the people that work there or the customers. You can't steal money because let's say McDonald's was the only job in existence and you needed it to live. Well, if they tell you Every day at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going to come in and clean the bathroom toilets. Well, if you want the job, you're going to have to do what they say. But the benefits of being in part of that corporation is you get money. You'll maybe get free food, even though it's crap food. You, you might even get paid vacations. So that's why in this government corporations around the world, you get benefits. You will get things like welfare. You will get things like, you know, Different protection, government protection, student loan capabilities. They create the bridges and roads so you can go to work, but they, they enslave you. So we're used to mediocrity, and some people just don't want to rock the boat. Well, one of these days, that boat is going to be named the Titanic, and it's going to sink. And just because you're on the higher end of the boat doesn't mean you're saved. So think about that. Learn about your fiction. Learn about your corporate name. Learn the difference. That is the fraud that I have discovered and many other people have discovered. That you, when you claim to be this, you are now committing fraud against yourself and you are representative of this corporate fiction that you think is you. Whether you believe in it or not, that's up to you. I'm not here to convince anybody anything. If you want to be one of the people that just dismiss it, perfectly fine. If you're one of the people that want to make fun of it, perfectly fine. If you're one of the people that don't doesn't want to take the time to research this stuff, it's perfectly fine. Nothing will get fixed then. So unless everybody wakes up and decides we don't want this anymore, it's going to continue because as we know with greed, greedy people all of a sudden don't say, oh, well, I got my fill. Let's just stop. They keep going. And they will keep draining from you until you're either dead, full of compliance and a total slave to the system, and I'm not talking about in chain slave, or they create a war, or the people finally say enough is enough and a revolution starts. This has happened throughout history. This is not some fairy tale. It's reality, or at least this reality, and at the very least, my reality. And that's why whether somebody agrees with it or not does not change the fact that it's my reality. If it resonates with you, you'll do what it takes to research this stuff. You will learn. You will protect yourself. Don't go to a court without knowing what you're doing and just say, oh, well, I'm not this person. Because right there, if you said, I'm not this person, you have not understood what the name person legally means. So you have to be very careful. Because they will use every single word to go against you. And that's why, like I said, that video, that viral video about that old homeless guy that went to court and he said all the right things and he had all the legal definitions. He knew all about his constitutional rights, but they still picked him up and put him in the jail because they gave him an invitation to jump off a bridge and he decided to do it because he did what they invited him to do. They volunteered. He volunteered his servitude, which means the 13th Amendment didn't protect him. He became a legal slave, which means they basically humored him, let him talk a little bit, and showed everybody, look what happens when you try and go against it not knowing what you're talking about. Because, like I said, if you only know 90%, it's the 10% that'll kill you. You know, you can have poison in your drink, and you could scoop out 99% of that poison. If you're dumb enough to still drink it, at the very least, it could make you sick. We need to know this. Thanks for watching, guys. If you appreciate this stuff, what I'm asking for you to do is hit the share button, hit the favor button, take the link of this video, post it on your social networks, get your family and friends to watch this stuff, watch my other videos, because I'm here without asking anybody a dime, giving information that can help you and help our all of our future. I have nothing to gain from this other than the fact that I know that I'm helping people, which for me is reward enough. If anybody says, oh, I'm doing this for the AdSense, I average about $2 a day. So if you think I'm doing this for the numerous amounts of millions of dollars I'm not getting, you are crazy. And if you notice that how many truther channels tell you if you want their information, oh, you have to go to another website, or you have to buy my DVD, or 
you could buy my book. They're out to scare you, give you partial information, and then sell you something. Here, I am asking for nothing because it's the right thing to do. So people can say whatever they want about me, but you know what? They could say, oh, you sell your Oregon pyramids. Oh, you sell your organic products. I don't use fear to make people think you need organic soap, otherwise you're going to die, and here's how you get it. I have a business, and unless those people have – they don't work for a living and they just get paid to do nothing – there's a lot of hypocrites in this world, but I'm not here saying, oh, well, if you want my information, then you have to buy my organic shampoo, and then it comes with the, the part two of this series. No, here's the information. Do with it what you will. If you choose to do nothing, that is a, the same choice as if you choose to say, today is the day I want to stop this corruption. It's up to the people. If you want corruption to continue, continue to do nothing. If you want to make a change and do it peacefully, you have to arm yourself with knowledge. That's all I can say. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. And don't forget to have your trolls spayed or neutered. Peace!